Hey, it's Osmosis, one of the developers of Subterfuge. In this video, we're going to be combining Subterfuge and Raphael Mudge's Armitage to unleash the full power of Metasploit on our foes. More specifically, we're going to use Subterfuge to create a man in the middle condition, then use Code Injection Module to inject our exploit into the victim's browser, and finally, we're going to use Armitage to hand our exploits to our targets. Uh, for starters, we're going to go ahead and start up Subterfuge. We're using a Kali Linux virtual machine. It should be 1.0.6. Uh, we're going to start up Subterfuge on the external interface. What this means is that we're going to hand Subterfuge our external IP address so that other machines can use it to control Subterfuge. We use the dash s command switch for this and specify our external IP address and the port we want to serve it up on. This means that we'll be able to control subterfuge from our OSX host machine despite um, the fact that subterfuge isn't actually running on OSX or capable of running on OSX for that matter. You don't have to do this, but uh, I do like to. So on OSX, we'll just go ahead and type in the IP address, call in the port, hit enter and that'll refresh the browser. Um, now we're there. We're going to uh, do this attack from scratch. So whereas Subterfuge is actually very capable of auto-configuring the attack, and it does a really good job of it, a really good job of guessing what your network configuration is, all that jazz, uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and do it ourselves. Because every now and then, Subterfuge might encounter a network configuration that it can't really get through, or can't really figure out, or stuff might just not be working and we want to do it ourselves since we have the know-how. So, if you notice, we've got our interfaces area. Um, if we click there, we see ETH0, it's the only interface I have on my virtual machine. And then we look at the gateway. It's the gateway. If you notice, there are actually two gateways that are the exact same. They're duplicates. This is because Subterfuge uses two methods to determine what your default gateway, or to guess what your default gateway is on the network. Um, in this case, both methods successfully returned the same gateway. Uh, so you see the same one twice. Eventually, we're going to go ahead and have it aware of the duplicates so that it can get rid of them by itself. Uh, but for now, know that those two duplicates are what they seem. They actually are the same IP address. We're going to go ahead and do this manually though. So if we hit manual gateway, we can type in what our own uh, IP address is. Just type that in and once we hit apply, that'll set our, our gateway manually. Um, now you can refresh the page and if you refresh the page, your gateway will show up. Um, in our case, the gateway stayed 192.168.1.1 because we'd already configured it that way. If you were configuring your gateway differently from what was specified, you'd see a change when you refresh the page. Now we're going to go ahead and set up our minimum vectors. Subterfuge comes pre-configured with four different minimum vectors. ARP cache poisoning, uh, wireless AP generation, WPAD hijacking, and rogue DHCP. Now it's not a good idea to use multiple vectors simultaneously because some of them will conflict with each other. Most specifically, WPAD hijacking and ARP cache poisoning. If you run those at the same time, your attack is likely to fail um, because the two vectors will fight and nothing good will happen. Uh, so if we set ARP cache, ARP cache poisoning and click apply, that'll set that up. Make sure that none of the other checkboxes are set. If we go to configuration, we can see all of the uh, rate sliders uh, for subterfuge. And this is important for us because it gives us a really good example of what Subterfuge does. For instance, the first one, the page reload rate, uh, it's by default set to three seconds. This means that if we're our cache poisoning the network and we're harvesting credentials, it means that if somebody logs into something, within three seconds we'll see their credentials in plain text. More importantly for our purposes today though, is the injection rate slider. Uh, Subterfuge is smart about injecting uh, people's browsers. It knows that uh, if you go to a website like Yahoo, Yahoo actually pulls in multiple external resources, all the news sites and stuff, uh, every time you load the page, which means that if Subterfuge were injecting every page, it would inject every one of those external resources over and over again if you're sending an exploit. You'd send the exploit like 15 different times just when you went to Yahoo. So by default, it's set to six seconds. Uh, that allows us to, say, let a user load a page, inject that page once, and then we move on to another page in six seconds-ish. Uh, we'll inject that next page. Uh, but since we're going to be using an actual exploit here, we're going to want to set that injection rate up really high. We're going to set that to 30 seconds. This means that uh, 
when somebody browses to a page, we'll inject that user's page once, and then we won't inject again for 30 seconds. This means that we won't send the exploit multiple times and keep crashing their browser over and over and over again. Helps us maintain a little bit of stealth when doing a really, really um, unstealthy attack. Uh, to be frank, our cache poison can be pretty loud against the network and very harsh. Uh, there are a couple other options you see here. Uh, dynamic retention is the most important one. Uh, it's a technology we added into subterfuge and it helps you maintain uh, the stability of an ARP cache poisoning. ARP cache poisons, uh, you tend to lose the poison for a decent amount of time while attacking an adversary. However, uh, dynamic retention lets you keep that for a longer time without breaks. It listens for uh, the traffic that a router will naturally send to reestablish uh, connection and, and to uh, alert other clients in the network of what the actual gateway is and subterfuge will interpose itself uh, into that conversation. Now some routers and some network topologies don't really like this and they'll freak out and everything will break and go down. We've noticed about a 50-50 uh, work versus failure rate with this but if you know it works it's going to increase your attack, uh, the capability of your attack. By default the network retention should be set to off and we're going to leave it off. Um, just go ahead and click apply and um, now we're all set up. We'll go to modules and we're going to use the HTTP code injection module. Uh, you'll notice that under exploits we've got a new option, uh, the inject external server. So we hit that, that gives us a couple new uh, options there. We can specify the IP address and the port. Now we're going to use the IP address of the machine that is serving up exploits. In this case it's our Kali, bo our Kali box, however this could just be whatever box is running Armitage or whatever box is serving up exploits. And we also have to specify the port. So hit apply here, and it's as simple as that. Um, Subterfuge now knows what to inject into um, our victim's browsing sessions. So we go to the home page and we click start. It'll start up the attack just like normal, nothing different. And then if we move over to our Kali machine, so this is what a subterfuge attack should look like. This is the output of subterfuge. If you notice in the right hand pane, that's what subterfuge looks like when it's uh, successfully running and poisoning a network properly. Now we're going to go ahead and start up Armitage. Armitage is going to let us set up a browser exploit server to hand off exploits to uh, our victims that we've uh, managed to exploit with subterfuge and that should give us an interpreter on their machines remotely. We're going to use a Java signed applet attack in order to uh, exploit our victims. So if on the left hand pane you can just type that in at the search bar. If you just double click. Armitage is nice enough to pull up the uh, exploit options. We do need to set the URI path to slash. Subterfuge would require that. And then the serve port, make sure that that's the same port as we set up in Subterfuge. In this case, 8080. So just hit launch, and that's all set up and good to go. Uh, now if Subterfuge doesn't, sit, doesn't show that, that bar that says the attack is going, just refresh it, it'll show up. And here's our victim. Uh, this guy's running Windows 7 Ultimate, uh, and he just needs to browse to any website. Doesn't really matter where, he's already on a website, he clicks a link to anything else. Doesn't matter where he goes, Subterfuge is going to go ahead and inject uh, our special malicious code onto the bottom of that site and uh, attack the victim. Now, now we browse to a website, if we go back to our Armitage box, uh, notice we have lightning bolts. And really that's all it takes to combine subterfuge with Armitage now. You can just specify the server and uh, set up Armitage listening there, serving up exploits, and if we just do a screenshot right quick here, uh, you notice we can see the screen of that Windows box that we've just uh, managed to get into. I hope that you enjoyed this video, I hope that it's been informative for you, and uh, thank you for using the tool.